I would like to say again, I don't know why I'm doing this as a revision because uh, we did this like 80,000 times, but never mind, it's okay, we will do it again, all right? So I am going to do a bank reconciliation um, revision with everybody, all right? So I am, what am I looking at? I'm looking at Yu Ying, 3 E E O Y, bank reconciliation set one. And if you are just here because you are, you need a little bit of comfort and you need a bit of reassurance, yeah, sure, it's okay. Uh, but if you if you have if you don't need any uh, reassurance, go ahead and do something else. All right, all right. So let's go and take a look at Yu Ying, three E E O Y. Everybody, all right? You must have this with you, otherwise it's useless. All right. So the way to do. Ooh, so strange the word. Okay. So the the thing about bank reconciliation is that your cash in hand balance, uh, sorry, your cash at bank balance, as well as your bank statement balances are different. And you are trying to find out the reason for them being different. All right, so the very first thing that you need to do is that you need to step number one. Maybe I should type here. All right, so the steps. All right, step number one, you should, the first thing that you need to do is compare opening balances. And opening balances must be the same. If it's not the same, you will need to find out the reason why it's not the same and you will need to delete that particular entry. All right. So let's take a look at what this compare opening balance means. Now, as you know, opening balance means the first balance. All right. The first balance on the first day of each month. All right, the first balance on the first day of each month. Okay, and in this case, the cash at bank shows that the opening balance is 9,300. 9, 9, oh, it's a credit. Makes it even more exciting. It's a credit. All right, a credit means what? It's a liability. In this case, the cash at bank account is a liability. You owe the bank money. This is probably a bank overdraft. Okay, so that is the first thing that we, we, we noticed that it's a liability and uh, we want to compare opening balances. So according to the bank statement, all right, the opening balance is 5400 and it's a debit. All right, and a debit balance inside the bank statement tells you that you owe the bank money. Why is it you owe bank? Because a debit is uh, a debit is indicative of an asset. All right. Usually, if you put money in the bank, the bank will take it as a liability to you because as and when you want the money back, the bank has to take the money and give it back to you. That's why it usually that's why it's usually recorded as a credit. However, in this instance, when you see that a bank statement shows a debit. It means that the bank is treating this 5400 as though it's an asset. So you owe the bank money, which is a bank overdraft. That means the business owe the bank money. Now, so the first step, like we mentioned, is to compare opening balances. And in this case, the opening balances is different. Now, if it's the same opening balances, no problem, just business as usual continue on. But the opening balance is different for this. So if the opening balance is different, what do you need to do next? If the opening balances are different, what you should do is to find the difference, right? So if that's uh, in this situation, find the difference. It will be 9,300 minus away 5,400. And the difference is because of that 3. The difference is due to that 3,900. That's a 3,900 difference. Which, uh, and uh, um, in this case, the cash at bank, you owe more money to the bank than uh, what your bank statement records. So what is this 3,900? If you take a look at your bank statement, you can see this nice 3,900, right? And if you were to take 9,000, uh, 5,400, which is a liability, uh, which is a, a, a debit in this case, and then you add this 3,900, it would be 9,300, right? 
So the difference is because of this 3,900. What is this 3,900? All right, so let's take a look at the check number. In this case, the check number tells you that it is check 1001. But if I were to look at my cash at bank account, I notice that my checks all start with 1002. So what is this 1001? 1001 is actually last month's. Last month's check payment that was only processed by the bank in the month of January. All right, it's actually last month's check payments that was only processed in the bank in January. All right, so this 1001 is actually last month's check. So the question is, if it's last month's check, do I need to continue to record it inside my cash at bank account? No need. All right, so usually the difference, you find the difference, and, what you, and the difference is because of last month's check. So the, the, the last month's check is not, rec not recorded by the bank uh, in the bank statement last month. So it, record it was recorded in the bank statement this month. Okay, recorded only this month. And because it was already recorded inside the cash at bank account, all you need to do is to cancel or cancel this uh, check. All right, so you literally go to this check and you take a line and you draw a line through it. You cancel it away, all right? You cancel it away because it's actually last month's check that was recorded by the accountant, which your banker only recorded this month. So your accountant already recorded it. There's no need to record it again, all right? So step one, compare opening balances. Okay, now step number two. So that answer one of the question already. Step number two, you need to compare and spot differences. Okay, so compare and find out what is the difference. If it's the same, you should put a tick. If it is um, different, you should circle it. All right, so what I will do is I am going to try to use a pen function. All right. And then I am going to do the comparison here. I'm going to do comparison now, okay? So for example, I have, I'm going to use a red color pen. So firstly, 12,000 in the debit column. Just nice, 12,000 in the deposit column. So these two, I will take, right? Another one, sales revenue 5580 inside the debit column. Is there a 5580 inside the deposit column? Don't have. So if don't have, what should I do? I should take a highlighter and highlight it. I should take a highlighter and highlight it. Okay, so I'm going to take my highlighter now and highlight it. So I'm going to highlight this 5580 because it's not shown inside my bank statement. It's only shown in my cash at bank account. Next one. 7740, a debit. All right, debit 7740, which means I received 7740. Is it shown inside the bank statement? Yes, it was shown on 21st of January. So I take both because similarities I take, differences I highlight or circle. All right, must do this. Trade receivable tiger 10230. Is it found in the bank statement? Yes, it is found on. January 22nd, Tiger. Next one, there is in the credit column. Now we know that a credit column in the cash at bank account signifies that it's a minus, right? So cash at bank minus $930. Is this shown inside the bank statement? Two, 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 eight. Don't have. So don't have, what should you do? You should highlight it. All right, and I have 1290. Can this be found inside the bank statement? Don't have. So if don't have, what should I do? I should also 
highlight it. So if I look at the e -E, 3 e paper, I will see that there are three items highlighted in my cash and bank account. And in my bank statement account, there are also, is it three items? One, two, three. Yes, three items, which I am highlighting as well. All right. So up to here, anybody got any questions? I'm just going to then here for 10 seconds for you to type your question. No questions. Okay, so we are going to proceed on to the next step. Now, step two, you already compare and then you already spotted your difference. Step number three, what are you going to do? You are going to update cash at bank account. Okay, you're going to update your cash at bank account with the stuff from the bank statement. All right, so which stuff are you going to up? You're going to update it with. Okay, so basically, right, your cash at bank account is this number at this point in time. Right, your cash at bank account is this 24,030 debit. All right, but we know that this is not the latest uh, balance because there are some stuff in the bank statement which you have not recorded yet. So, which of the stuff in the bank statement have you not recorded? Can you see all these tick ticks? All the tick ticks, right, actually means that you have recorded them already. That's why you tick it. All right. The things that are not recorded in the cash at bank account are these things, are these stuff that you have highlighted. The 2500, which you cannot find anywhere in your bank, cash at bank account. 7740, which is not in your cash at bank account. Oh, it is in a, but it's like on the wrong column, you see. The 7740 is actually a debit in your cash at bank account, which you tick against the deposit. But this 7740 is a withdrawal and it will tell you that it's a dishonored check. So mm, alarm bell should be going off by now, right? So this dishonored check is not shown in your cash at bank account. You will need to update your cash at bank account. Now bank charges is also not shown in your cash at bank account and you will need to update your cash at bank account as well. So what am I going to do? I am going to continue on with the first question. Prepare the updated cash at bank account and bring down the new balance. All right, so when I prepare a cash at bank account, it means that I need to prepare a ledger. And the name of this ledger is cash at bank. And by now, I hope we know what is the format of a ledger. All right, the ledger has a format date, particulars, debit, credit, and balance. Date, particular, debit, credit, and balance. All right. And um, it is always very good practice to write down what is the accounting rule for this ledger. So this is a cash at bank ledger. Let me just make the columns a bit nicer to look at. This is a cash at bank ledger. So it means that the 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 um Okay, so it means that the accounting rule is plus minus, meaning anything on the plus side, we anything that increases cash at bank, we will record as debit. Anything that reduces cash at bank, we will record it as a credit. Right? When we want to do the third step, which is update cash at bank account, the question is, do we start from 9300 credit or do we start from 24030 debit? Which number do you start from? The logical answer, because all of us are lazy people, we should start from 24030 debit. You cannot start from 9300 because in between 9300 and 24030, there's actually a lot of transactions. Can you see all these transactions which I'm highlighting? All right, all these transactions, you know, and if you don't, if you start from 9300, you have to record all these transactions again. You don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. So you should just directly update from the ending balance, the last balance that is given to you, whatever the final balance is. And in this case, the final balance is 24030 debit. And that is what I will do. Prepare the updated bank account at 31st of January 2020. 
and bring down the new balance. So I will start with 2020, January 31st, balance brought down would be 24030 debit. Okay. All right. Now, what do I update with? Like what we mentioned just now, when we update our cash at bank account, we will update it based on the bank statement, whatever we have circled or highlighted. All right, those differences. And when I update, it is all with the S at 31st of December, uh, 31st of January. All right, because I only found out on 31st of January. So I will update using 31st of January date. So I'm going to start first with direct payment, Nikel withdrawal, a withdrawal from my bank statement at 2,500. The favorite thing for all students to do is to just copy this and type it, type it down like that. And it is wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Cannot type enough access to emphasize this. All right? You will not get any marks. I promise you that you will not get any marks if you are going to type a direct payment Nikel. You cannot just copy it like that. If you just copy it like that, you will get zero. All right, because you have not shown me that you know how to read a bank statement. Now, if you know how to read a bank statement, you know that a withdrawal, in the withdrawal column, you paid Nikel $2,500. So if you paid Nikel $2,500, Nikel must be somebody to you. All right, so who is Nikel to you? There's two options. Nikel is either a trade receivable or a trade payable. There's only these two options. It's either a trade receivable or trade payable, all right? And in this case, because you are paying Nikel, he cannot be a trade receivable. Since you are paying Nikel, Nikel is your trade payable. All right, so direct payment Nikel, don't write direct, write trade payable, Nikel. Can? Okay, write trade payable Nikel. Right, trade payable Nikel, you paid Nikel $2,500 from your bank account. It's a withdrawal from your bank statement. So cash at bank, you're going to write minus 2500 from your cash at bank account in the credit column. I'm using my trusty calculator. My balance is going to be 21530 debit. So I recorded this already, yeah? So yay, I have recorded. Um, I recorded my two five two five zero zero already. Okay, I recorded my two five zero zero. This one recorded already. So I am just going to put a tick here, so that I know I have recorded it. Tick here, I recorded already, yeah? All right, next thing. Next one I want to record is my dishonored check. This transaction here. I'm going to record this dishonored check. Um, I'm going to update it in my cash at bank account. All right. Now, a dishonored check this is a withdrawal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down in the credit column of my cash at bank account, which is a minus, minus 7740. All right. And then what am I going to write here? So again, a favorite thing to do is for students to copy directly and say it's a dishonored check. And if you do this, you are bound to get it wrong. You will definitely confirm plus guarantee, get it wrong. You're not allowed to write this on the chat because there's no account called this on the chat. Instead, you must try, you must find out who is the person who dishonored the chat. All right. And if we go back again, 7740 actually relates to this 7740 over here. Lah. Okay, so this trade receivable funding. This teacher very nice, no? Right here, trade receivable fundy. I won't write trade receivable fundy. I will directly just write fundy. All right, I will just write fundy. Then I will leave it to you to decide whether is it a trade receivable or trade payable. Evil, right? Yeah, that's me. Okay, so um, so how do I decide whether fundy is a trade receivable or trade payable? Now, in this case, seven seven four zero uh, seven seven four zero is actually in the debit column. So, which means that this business receive money from Fundy. All right, you receive money from Fundy. And if you receive money from Fundy, 
Fundy cannot be a trade payable. You took money from Fundy. So if you took money from Fundy, right? Fundy is a trade receivable. All right? So you cannot just write dishonored check like this. You must say, this is a trade receivable from Fundy. All right? It's a trade receivable from Fundy. What has happened here? So basically what happened is Fundy paid you 7740 over here. He paid you 7740. And you being that gullible wretch that you are, deposited it in the business bank account. And then your banker also said, yeah, Fundy paid you 7740. But then after that, Fundy, that despicable wretch, actually has no money in his bank account. And because he has no money in his bank account, right? Cannot pay you. So since he cannot pay you, your banker took 7740 out of your bank account again. Minus or deducted, your banker deducted 7740. So this 7740 relates back to Fundy, who actually didn't really pay you. So since he didn't really pay you, you need to deduct 7740 from your business bank, cash at bank account. And then after that, the other account affected is trade receivable funding. You're going to increase the amount that he owes you because of his, this stunt that he pulled. All right. And then of course, you'll take your calculator and calculate your final ending balance, which is $13,790 debit. And then after that, we have um, recorded, we have, we have recorded this ready. So we put a tick and say, yes, we have recorded this over here. We've recorded right over here. All right. And then the next thing that we are going to record is our bank charges. Now, bank charges is quite straightforward. Everybody loves bank charges and knows what bank charges is, right? So what are bank charges? Bank charges under the withdrawal column is basically money that you have to pay your banker because it provides you with a banking services. All right, so the banker will just directly deduct the amount away from your cash, uh, from your bank statement. Won't tell you, just deduct it away. And so now that you found out about it, you are going to record it. A withdrawal from your bank statement will mean that you need to record it as a withdrawal in your cash at bank account, a minus in your cash at bank account. So you're going to minus away $120 here. Why you pay for bank charges? I would like to say something at this point in time. Bank charges are not interest. All right, bank charges are not interest expense. I have some students telling me, oh, bank charges are interest expense. No, bank charges are interest expense. Not the same. In Malay, we say tak sama. Not the same. Pu yi yang. Onaji janai is not the same. All right. Bank charges are charges that the bank um, charges you because they provided you with a banking services. They allow you to have a bank account with them. Then they allow you to put money in the bank, withdraw and deposit, etc. So the bank charges are related to the bank account that you have. All right. Now, interest is related to the bank loan that you borrow from the bank. All right. So interest expense is related to loans, bank loan. And in this case, this is a bank statement. Huh? It's not, it is, um, it is to tell you how much money you deposited in the bank. It's not interest. If it's interest, they will very clearly and directly say that it's an interest. So you will see one line called interest and it could be an interest income or interest expense, okay? So bank charges is not interest. You found out about these bank charges on 31st of January. So you're going to write it down on that date. And then um, the balance, 13910 dollars Okay. Got people calling me so, so anxious. All right, apart from that, you are done. And so now you're going to bring down the new balance. So when you bring down the new balance, it is February 1st. And balance brought down. And you're going to record it as 13910 debit. Yes. Everybody okay from here? Four marks. Where would I give you the four marks? I will have given you the four marks here. 
Okay, so I'm just going to pause a little bit and let you absorb here. Okay, I just realized I'm on mute. So I'm no longer on mute anymore. And step number four. After you update your cash and bank account with stuff from the bank statement, you will need to prepare bank reconciliation. All right? Need to prepare bank reconciliation. So, what numbers go into your bank? Oh, sorry, I forgot to I, I forgot to tick. So now I'm going to tick. This one I record already, so I tick. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do the last step, and the last step is to update. Ah, uh, sorry, to prepare bank reconciliation. Now you see all my bank statement numbers, so everything that I forgot to update my cash at bank account, I have already updated. See, it's all been ticked already. All right, but the problem is this. Why is my cash at bank balance still different from my bank statement balance? Ah, you see, uh, when I update everything already, my cash at bank account is $13,910, right? According to my own records as an accountant. But then, According to my banker's record, it is not $13,910. According to my banker's records, it is $10,310. So why is there a discrepancy? Why is there a difference of like, like $3,000 plus, I guess? Why, what is the difference due to? The difference is due to these three things hanging out here. These three yellow color highlighted items here. All right? So basically... What has happened is you have recorded everything inside your bank statement into your cash and bank account, but your banker has not recorded these transactions into the bank statement yet. He will record it probably next month. All right. So you need to prepare the cash bank reconciliation. Why? The bank reconciliation will show why there's a difference between these two green numbers. The bank reconciliation will show why there's a difference between your bank statement number and your updated cash at bank number. The difference is due to these three items. Now, these three items got name one. All right, so these three items are called timing differences. All right, so these three items, they are called timing differences. So let me just like draw like that. All right, timing differences. Why is it called timing differences? They are called timing differences because your accountant has already recorded this sales revenue, recorded the trade payable, recorded the trade payable, but then your banker hasn't recorded it yet. It could be because the trade payable hasn't taken the check and going to claim it from the bank. All right? It could be because the deposit is still on the way to the bank. The bank has not recorded it yet, but it is timing differences. Next month, the bank will probably very high, like, highly likely, 99%, they will record these items unless your creditors never go and take the, the check and give to the bank. If not, very likely, these three items will show up in the bank statement. All right? But it is still a good form of internal control that your business knows exactly what is causing the difference between your cash at bank account, 13910, and your bank statement number, 10310. Your business still should know what is the item that's causing the difference between these two numbers highlighted in green. And in order to very clearly say out what are the items which are causing the difference between the two numbers highlighted in green, the business need to prepare a bank reconciliation. Prepare the bank reconciliation statement. 
And that is what we are going to do next. The bank reconciliation statement shows the differences, uh, the items that are causing the differences between the cash at bank account and the bank statement number. Okay, and keeping that in mind, I am going to prepare the bank, uh, the, 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 what you call this, the bank reconciliation statement now. And the bank reconciliation statement should always start with the business name first. So it's called Fit Fit Sports Fair. Now, you also need to tell people what statement you are preparing. All right. And usually, the question will give you the title of the statement, which I have highlighted in green in this case. All right. So the title of the statement is also given to you. All you need to do is to copy it. All right. So bank reconciliation statement is at 31st of January. All right. And then usually, if it's a nice student, will highlight something. Like so to let the teacher, it's easier for the teacher to read. Only one column, a dollar sign. There's no debit, no debt credit in this uh, bank reconciliation statement. Now, what do we start off first with? We're going to start off first with our bank balance first. So I will type here balance as per bank statement. What's the meaning of the word as per? As per, this one, basically just means according to. As per me, according to. Okay, but it's a balance according to the bank statement. Except that in the, in the exam, you don't have to write according to. Like you just write as per can. Now, the balance according to your bank statement. Which one is bank statement? Ah? This one, 31910 or 30130. Which one is the bank statement? The bank statement is the 10310 number. Okay, so balance according to the bank statement, 10310. All right, now there are some, I, now at the end of the day, you want to make sure that this number, that you are able to show uh, why there's a difference between the bank statement and the updated cash at bank. So the balance as per updated cash at bank, or you might say adjusted, cash at bank balance, 13910. There are some things that are causing the difference between the both of them, all right? And we are going to find out what they are right now, okay? So firstly, if I take a look at my cash at bank account right here, I can see the first thing that is causing the difference is this 5580 sales revenue. Now this 5580 is in the debit column. All right, a debit column means that it is in the plus column. What has happened here? The accountant has recorded an increase. All right, the accountant has recorded an increase in cash at bank account of 5580. 5580. Increase in cash at bank account of 5580. But the banker never recorded it. All right, the banker didn't record it. The accountant record already, but your banker never record. All right, since your accountant recorded already, but your banker, this number here never record, what you're going to do is that we are going to put this amount under add. Add something, something, something. Later the name I will tell you, okay? Add what? Add sales revenue. And the amount of sales revenue in this case, is 5540. 5580. 5540, 5580. See you again. Sorry, 5580. All right, so the amount of sales revenue is, or rather, you need to increase your bank statement amount by 5580. Why? Because your banker never record. That's why you need to increase this $10,000 by 5580. A0 because your banker never record 5580. So you need to increase the balance. So maybe I write like that. Okay, the banker didn't record it. And if the banker never record it, right, you need to you need to increase the amount of the bank statement. Okay, so that's why you are increasing. 10,000 
310 by another 5580 because your banker Denver increased. So you need to increase for C. All right. Now, such increases or such deposit is known as deposits in transit. What does it mean? It means that your banker, this deposit, right, is literally on the way to the bank. The banker will receive it, but he hasn't received it yet. That's why he cannot record it as a plus. So the special name for this is called a deposit in transit. Okay. Now the other items. So now you record, you, you put this 5580 inside your bank record already, right? The other two items are your trade payables inside the credit column. So what happened to this? Your cash at bank account, your accountant recorded a minus. Minus 930, minus 1290, minus away, minus cash at bank. But then your banker never record. Your banker did not record minus. All right. Since your banker did not record the minus, that is what is causing a difference between your updated cash at bank account and your bank statement. And if that's the case, in your bank reconciliation, you will have to deduct these two amounts away. Less. There's a special name for it. Later we talk about the special name. Okay. Less, but there are two names. You know that is uh, they tell you it's trade payable JD supply. So you just type whatever. This one you can say. Uh, whatever is given there. So trade payable, JD supplies. All right. And it is a less, right? So you need to minus away. Minus $930. All right. Why minus? Because again, your banker never record. Banker did not deduct. Your banker did not deduct. So that's why you have to deduct here. Your banker never deduct. That's why you are deducting now. Deduct away from what balance? From the bank statement balance. That's why you see minus. Huh? Okay, so this is one of the items. There was another item which you also deducted, but your banker never deduct. Your banker not deduct. So trade payable here. And equipment work. All right. So equipment work. There was a, a payment which you correctly recorded, but your banker never deduct. So you minus away. Same thing, banker never deduct. Okay. So these two items here, these two items here, which you deducted, but your banker never deduct. There is a special name for it. All right. And these names are checks not yet presented. Meaning what? You wrote a check to JD Supplies and you wrote a check to Equipment World. But these two creditors didn't take the check and uh, claim the money from the bank. So that's why the banker didn't deduct. All right. So they have these checks have not yet been presented to the bank for payment. So the special name for such checks is checks not yet presented because the creditor hasn't presented the checks to the bank for payment. Okay, so at this point in time, you should take a calculator and calculate everything. And it should be very nicely equals to um, three, one, oh, sorry, 13910. So you should take 10310 plus 5580. Minus 390 minus 1290. <gasps> it's not the same. Why? Did I make a mistake somewhere? So after I calculated, right, I discovered that it's different. So now I have to go and find a mistake. I made a mistake somewhere and I need to find my mistake. Okay. If you spotted my mistake, can you please help me? It should be the same. Uh. If it's not the same, means you made a mistake. Okay? Somebody made a mistake. Is it me? It's slightly me. If you have spotted my mistake, can you please tell me what my mistake is? It should be the same. Okay. 
check again. Can you please use the check function so that I know you're talking to me? Okay, let's check again. 930 250 Alright, what? Did I type on something? 24030 24030 minus 2500 minus 7720 minus 220. Oh, it's wrong. I calculated wrongly here. So this one is wrong. See, see, so bad reconciliation. Now, if it don't, if it's not the same, right? It's something which you can check and get. Um, can find your mistake one, okay? So I miscalculated the 13,670 just now. It should be like this. So now it's correct. Okay? All right. So you have done your band reconciliation statement and you can do the second uh, C. State the effect of the band reconciliation on Profit for the year. So in when you are doing this bank reconciliation process, the whole process, which is the bank reconciliation process, step one to step four, all these is the bank reconciliation process. As part of doing this process, what is the effect of doing this entire thing on the profit for the year? So we know that a few things affect the profit for the year. Right? So what are the two things that affect the profit for the year? Income and expenses. Income and expenses affect the profit for the year. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these items here, the cash at bank items here. All my cash at bank items here. And then I'm going to see, did I um, do, did I, did I, did I, um, is there anything here that affected my profit for the year? And the answer is yes, there is one thing here that affected the profit of the year. This one, bank charges did affect the profit for the year. All right, bank charges did affect the profit for the year. And in this case, you actually paid more bank charges. You paid for bank charges using the cash at bank account. All right, so what is the effect? The effect is that, so there is a payment of bank charges, right? So payment of bank charges. reduced, or you can say decreased the profit for the year by $120. All right? That is the answer. Okay? So basically, read the question and then go and look at your cash at bank account and say, oh, which one is it affected? It has affected your cash at bank, your bank charges, affected your profit for the year. All right. So I think D and E is quite straightforward. I'm not going to go through it. I'm just going to ask, are there any more requests that I do any? Uh, what if it's, so there's a question. What if it's not bank charges? Okay, so is that, what other possible items? Uh, will can can that uh, will that will will appear inside your bank statement? So other possible items could be, for example, interest income. So if it's interest income, what impact does interest income have on the profit for the year? Interest income will increase the profit for the year, right? Other possible things are also, for example, utilities expense. What impact does utilities expense have on profit for the year? It will decrease profit for the year. Right? Because the more expenses you have, the lesser profit you have. Okay? Other kind of uh, items that you may see, I don't know, maybe uh, commission income. So commission income also increase profit. Why? Right? It's an income. So income will cause your profit to go up. Okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is bank reconciliation. Actually, bank reconciliation do a lot of times really bad. There's even an SLS that will step-by-step step tell you what to do. 
Okay, so is there any other particular question that you would like me to do or go through with you? You should unmute yourself and tell me now. If not, uh, Wait, good uh, question. Um, yes, Trisha. Uh, just now for the uh, profit increase or decrease question, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Must you a moment, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share screen again. Must you state the amount? Yes, you need to. So if you know the amount, so Trisha's question is very good. The, her question is, do I need to give the amount if I need to increase or decrease? Okay, or, or overstate, understate. All right. Do I need to give the amount? The answer is yes. If you know the amount, you need to state the amount. If you don't know the amount because it's a random generic question, then you don't need to give. But if you know how much is it, then you will have to state how much is it. Why? Because I'm also testing and checking that you know how to know how to identify the correct amount. Okay. So, any other questions? So the good thing red questions to try your are uh, these questions lah. So set two, then red set two, the six, three n. It's quite a good set. Uh, quite a good question for you to try. If you can do the six without and get the answer correct without referring, you should be able to do. All right. The other two questions are little bit shoo shoo, little bit small small difficult. Oh, you can do issue three y also. Okay, you can also do bank red set one, issue three e. Also okay, not too bad. Look okay. All right, and if you can do this too, you will be fine. You will be fine. So where do you get the answers from? You all know where to get answers for all the practice papers. SLS. Yes, correct. You say that. Thank you very much. All the answers are on SLS, so you can go and download and have a look. Okay. So tomorrow, ah, uh, tomorrow, I'm very sure bank rate will come out lah. It's a huge topic. Uh, I'm also very sure confirm plus guarantee there's going to be bank record, uh, bank financial statements. So you see, ah, uh, I break down like that for you, okay? I break down like this for you, ah. Uh. I break down like this. Huh? These are the confirm will come out question. Right? Financial statements. It's 20 marks. Confirm will come out. SBQ. Inventory or trade receivables. And I told you guys, inventory I tested in WA3. So trade receivable, I totally just teach only. So of course, I would like to test trade receivable, right? Five marks. Right, then the major topics, inventory, so, so, like inventory, things like reconciliation, these are major huge topics, right? Major huge topics you can get, you can think uh, that the teacher will probably set like five marks or rather eight marks to 10 marks. Let's say 10 marks. Inventory, 10 marks. Uh, bank recon, 10 marks. You add all these up together, it's already 45 marks. So ladies and gentlemen, it's not difficult to pass a POA paper, all right? And furthermore, you're only in set three, so the number of topics that you all did, right, is very, very limited, right? So whatever I test in paper one, I cannot test in, I, I will definitely not test in paper two. So it is not difficult to predict the topics that's going to come up. In fact, I really reminded the class what are some important topics that you should revise. And so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, intelligent young creatures, please go and make sure you know how to do your financial statements by heart. Please go and practice a little bit or read a little bit more about your SBQs. Please make sure you know how to do your payment reconciliations. And hey, inventory did come out for paper one. Inventory came out for paper one. Yeah, inventory came out for paper one. So it won't come out for paper two again, right? Please make sure you know how to do your bank reconciliation. Right? And so um, these questions will help you to pass the paper two. But I'm sure you're aiming to do well, right? Not pass, right? Jaya, everybody. Any last questions you want to ask me?
Any last questions? Calling once, calling twice. Okay, everybody, all the best tonight. Go and do all the rest of the paper, including especially, especially, especially the two past year paper. Please do two past year paper, check answer. Don't understand the question? Don't understand the answer? Can you please uh, let me know? Okay? I have one request, go through right off. Eh, what, 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 what you mean by go through right off? Do you want to know the double entry for right off? This person? Is it that you want to know the double entry for right off? Wait, trade receivables uh, will come out again. Trade receivables, no, the allowance will not. I mean, yesterday, and see yesterday, uh, paper one, right? There was a whole question on allowance, right? So you can imagine that uh, for the paper two, I will not have a whole question on allowance anymore. At the very, very worst case scenario, right? There will be a write off in, to adjust for financial statements. You, you know what I mean? Oh, so there's like no like whole questions. There will not be a whole question on allowance anymore because in paper one, there was already one whole question on allowance, right? Doesn't make sense for me to test so much on allowance. So will... it will only appear in like financial statements. Yes, it might appear in the financial statements. It might appear as a small little question, ask you to define the uh, accounting theory or give me the double entry, but there will not be a whole huge question on it anymore. Oh, okay. Okay, so how much? Oh, Ryan, I want to cry. Ryan, how much is paper two worth? So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to refer to this. Oh, yeah, I don't have it here. You refer to your, your notes. Huh? I'm going to go back to the notes again. So, I'm just going to refer you back to my notes here. Uh, here. Okay, I am just going to use this and show this. Show this. Okay, so new share this screen. Okay, so I'm just going to refer to us, everybody here, and remind you paper two is two hours, 60 marks, right on full step paper. It is not 25 mark financial statement. I type wrongly. It is 20 marks financial statements. Okay. So Ryan is worth 60 marks. All right. So just now somebody mentioned, somebody asked, uh, am I able to do a quick, 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 quick revision on write off? Okay, sure. So I'm just going to do a quick revision on what are the double entries for write off. So firstly, you need to understand what write offs are. Basically, write-offs are amounts that your credit customer owe you, all right? And it's confirmed, confirmed, confirmed plus guarantee. They are confirmed, uncollectable, all right? They cannot be collected. Why can't they be collected? Because your credit customer died, ran away, closed down the business. And therefore, you totally cannot take the money back forever and ever, all right? Seems the person die, you don't want them to come back from death and give you back the money. What you are going to do is to say this amount is uncollectable. So we will write it off. When we write a debt off, we are going to deduct trade receivables, minus trade receivables, or credit trade receivable. We minus trade receivable minus away the asset. Why do we minus away the trade receivable? Because we are never getting it back again. So we deduct it away. Okay. The second account that is going to be affected is your allowance for impairment of trade receivable. All right. And allowance for impairment of trade receivable, we will also deduct it away. Why? What is this allowance for impairment of trade receivable? Now, an allowance for impairment of trade receivable, right, is basically an estimate. It is an estimate. Last year, you estimated the amount that is likely, likely to be uncollectable. Right? So last year, you actually estimated an amount which maybe cannot collect. 
And then you put aside this allowance. It's like a buffer, a little bit like a buffer. You set aside a buffer, all right, uh, of debts which you think an estimate may not be able to collect, all right? Now, in this year, it really happened, okay? This write-off, uh, this person really cannot pay you. So what you do is that you deduct against your buffer, all right? So you minus away from your allowance of impairment of trade receivable, all right? You deduct it again your contra asset which is your buffer because last year you predicted maybe a certain amount cannot pay and if this year really happened that um, that person cannot pay all right so you deduct against this buffer so this is the double entry for a debt to be written off all right you will minus away the allowance for impairment of trade receivable okay now how does this lead on to your adjusting your uh, allowance at year end. So when you uh, uh, adjust your allowance at year end, right? Firstly, it's done at the year end, right? It's done at the end of the year. The accountant will look at the original allowance balance, whatever is written off, and then the ending balance. And then they will decide whether to increase or reduce the allowance. So in this situation, uh, I taught you this um, little thing to help you to calculate. It's called the OWE, right? So O stands for original balance, original allowance. All right, in this case, the original allowance is usually a percentage, all right? So a percentage, so let's say 10% of your trade receivable, which is say $10,000. All right, so 10% of $10,000 is always a percentage. Lah. So your original allowance in this case is $1,000. All right, now you deduct away your write-off. So just now you also right, write off minus trade receivable. The other account affected is minus away uh, allowance for impairment. So what you do is from this $1,000, you minus away. You minus away whatever the write-off is, all right? Whatever that is written off. If $100 is written off, you minus away the $100. Sometimes there is more than one write-off. Sometimes there is more than one write-off. Sometimes only, not all the time, okay? So if there's more than one write-off, you minus away more than one write-off. Now, what does the E stand for? E stands for ending allowance. Again, the ending allowance is a percentage of your trade receivable. All right, let's say your trade receivables in this uh, case at the end of this year is $15,000. So 10% of $15,000 will be $1,005, right? So how much should I increase or decrease my allowance. Now that depends. Uh, that so you have to work it out, right? So one thousand dollars allowance minus of one hundred minus of three hundred. After deducting all my write off, my allowance is six hundred dollars. All right. So my six hundred, my allowance now is six hundred dollars, and the ending allowance I want is fifteen hundred dollars. So my allowance need to increase by how much? Need to increase by $900. Okay, so that's how you use the OWE. Your, ending, your allowance need to increase by $900. And if you need to increase your allowance by $900, what are you doing? You are basically increasing your allowance. Right? And when you increase your allowance, these are the two accounts affected. Firstly, of course, you increase your allowance for impairment of trade uh, receivables. Then the second account that you are increasing is your impairment losses. Why do you increase your impairment loss? If you think that there are more people who cannot pay you, naturally, you are going to make more losses. All right? So if there's a higher estimate, of people who cannot pay you, right? It's more, very likely that you're going to make more losses. That's why when your allowance increase, your impairment loss also increase. Okay? All right. 
So let's take another example. All right, let's take another example. Uh, in this, this case, everything remains the same, except your ending allowance is different. All right, so let's assume that this year, uh, actually, not a lot of people uh, owe you money uh, because everybody, you manage to collect money from everybody very quickly. And therefore, your trade receivable is only $5,000, very small. But your ending allowance is still 10% of your trade receivable, which makes it $500. You need an ending allowance of $500. All right, your current allowance is $600, but you only need $500. So actually your allowance, you don't need so much. And so what you're going to do is you're going to minus away $100 from $600 so that you get an ending allowance of $500. All right. And if I take this in green, right, what are the double entry I need to pass in order to reduce my allowance by $100? All right, what is the double entry I need to pass to reduce my allowance by $100? What I'm going to do is I'm going to minus away my allowance, minus $100 from it. And the other account affected is your impairment loss. You're also going to reduce your impairment loss on trade receivables by $100. The account is reduced in payment loss $100. But in the FS, in the financial statements, you don't call it impairment loss minus. What you do is you call it reversal of impairment loss on trade receivables. And you show it as a gain of $100. Meaning when all your um, expenses are negative, 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 right? Your reversal of impairment loss is actually a positive gain, a positive number. Okay? So uh, the student will ask, I hope I, I explained this. Is there any other question that you would like to ask me on any topic at all? I'm going to do this. I'm going to run to the toilet and come back again. In the meantime, you are then there and then think of any other final question you would like to ask me, okay? Okay, so I have a question. My question is this, for impairment loss, do you record it as a, uh, for impairment loss on trade receivables, do you record it in the finance, statement of financial performance or statement of financial position? Dun, 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 dun. So I'm going to go back again to my double entry here, over here, over here, my double entry over here. And I would like to draw everybody's attention to the statement 
uh, to the impairment loss accounts, which I am going to highlight in yellow. So what is the accounting, uh, what is the accounting element of impairment loss? Is the expense, right? So where are expenses shown? Is the expenses shown in the statement of financial position or is it shown in the statement of financial performance? Drum roll, please. Expenses are shown in the statement of financial performance. Okay, statement, uh, statement impairment loss is shown in the statement of financial performance because it's an expense. Same, impairment loss on inventory, also performance because it's an expense. We, to compile, understand? Okay. Any questions? Any last questions? Uh, Miss Lin. Yes. So, trade this gone, right? Or oh, let's mm. say, uh, like you give this customer like a trade discount and then mm -hmm. like, uh in the end they wait why not wait, I don't know if trade discount or cash discount. Uh cannot uh, trade discount and cash discount very different. Like. You cannot like uh, like I don't know which one is which one. Because the way you will record trade discount and the way you record cash discount is different. Huh? Is there such thing as a reversal? Yes, it is possible. So uh, just give you an example here, right? Okay, so I just use an any old space. So the question is, is it possible to reverse a trade discount? Is it? Can show the transaction. Can. I can give you an example. Is it possible to reverse a trade discount? Everybody know what uh, the question is? Hey, if you don't understand what the question is, please quickly say. So the possible transaction could be this transaction on 1st of January. All right, uh, Olivia. So uh, goods, this price, $1,000 to Fisher on credit. Okay, so this is a possible transaction. On 1st of January, Livia sold goods this price, $1,000 to Trisha on credit. Okay, and then after that, on 10th of January, Trisha return the goods so uh, return the goods on 1st of January to Livia. So is it, is it, oh, wait, wait, wait. Trisha was given a 3% trade discount. So Trisha, are you referring to such transactions? Yeah. Ah, okay. So how do you record these transactions, right? So firstly, if you, uh, I am, so let's say you are, assume that you are Livia. La. Okay, you are Livia. You sell goods, $1,000 to Trisha on credit. All right, so you are, Trisha was given a 10% trade discount. So what are the two accounts affected? Firstly, when you sell goods at $1,000 lease price, this is actually the selling price. All right, it's not the cost price. So they have only given you selling price information for this transaction. So the two accounts related to selling price, since you sell goods, you are going to record sales revenue. There's an increase of sales revenue, a credit of a certain amount. How much is it? Your original price was $1,000 and you gave Trisha a 10% discount. Okay, so you should take $1,000 times 90% because the 90% is the final amount that Trisha needs to pay you. All right, the 10% is a trade discount. She don't need to pay you that 10%. All right, so sales revenue is 90, uh, $900, 1,000 times 90%. Okay, the 10% is a trade discount. And I just want to remind everyone again Trade discount is not recorded in Livia's books. 
Livia or Tricia's books. Nobody records the 10% trade discount. It's as though it never happened. Uh, no, not that it never happened, that it is the, it, as though like the final selling price is $900. All right? There is, it is not recorded anywhere. Okay? Now, just want to highlight to you that Trisha bought the goods on credit. And since Trisha bought the goods on credit, it will be recorded as trade receivables because you are Livia. Trade receivables, Trisha, increase by $900 because Trisha needs to pay you $900. All right. So what happens here is that there is on 10th of January, Trisha returned the goods bought on 1st January, we turn it back to Livia. All right, so this is what happens on 10th of January. So on 10th of January, Trisha returned the goods. Now this sales revenue, right, is as though it never happened, but I cannot take sales revenue minus $900. No, we don't do that. Instead of sales revenue minus $900, I record it as a sales returns, increase it, and it debit $900. Why sales returns? Remember that sales return is a contra income. Uh, it is a, a reduction of income. I right? also want to remind you later on, inside your financial statements, all right, inside your financial statements, this is actually what happens. Uh, in your financial statements, you will record sales revenue increased by $900, right? But then because Trisha, sorry, Trisha, gave back to Livia. Livia will actually record less sales returns and it will reduce by $900. Okay? So, when Trisha returned the goods to Livia, you don't minus away the sales revenue. What you do is you increase sales re returns so that Livia Later in the financial statements, we can see the sales returns over here. Why is it that I want to rec record under sales returns and not sales directly minus off against sales revenue? Because as a user of the financial statements, it's important to see the amount of goods that get returned to the to the uh to uh, return by the sub, uh, customer to the seller. All right, why? Because you, you all know like, when we return goods, right, it's because the goods destroyed, the goods damaged, uh, uh, Miss Lim, uh, Livia sell uh, wrong goods to Trisha, send her wrong color. Trish. So by looking at this sales return number, right, we can get an idea of whether Livia is selling quality goods or if her customer service is good. If the sales return is super, super high, right, then you can imagine actually Livia is not a very good supplier. All right? So sales return will increase by $900 and trade receivables, Trisha, actually Trisha don't need to pay me this amount anymore. Why? Because she returned me the goods. All right. Now she returned me the goods. So I record trade receivables, Trisha minus credit $900. Okay. So these are the double entries. If I don't remember wrongly, Inside the notes, uh, there's actually a double entry for this as well. Okay, any one final question before I close the Zoom for today? All right, there is uh, 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 the recording for the Zoom, so you can go back and have a look. But I have to say that the recording for the Zoom is will take a while because Zoom will take a while to convert it and send the email to me and give me the link. Then I still need to extract and put it on face, uh, on YouTube. So it will take a while for the conversion to happen, all right? Any other final question? Yes. So to clarify, right? Yes. In financial statements, right? The sales returns. So like they already give you like a sales returns amount, then you just plus the 900. So if you're talking about financial statements, yes, the sales return amount will be given to you if there is a sales return. Or then you just, if there is, yes. if it's provided to you, then you just... Yes. So this is for financial statements. So if you were to look at an example, right? If you take a look at your this same uh, topical revision paper, 
right? Just the very um, first question, right? So I think you did this question in class already. Can you see that um, Ishun 3N, right? That is a sales returns. So the number is the number is given to you in this issue in 3 pm. All right, so if it's a financial statements question, right, the number is going to be given to you. And it is unlikely that the adjustment is going to be very complicated. This kind of adjustment now will happen for trade receivables, trade receivable ledger. Where to find? Go back and find the video which I recorded and go through that again. Okay? Any final question? Calling once? Calling twice? Okay, the auction is closed. Goodbye, everybody. Today, go home and do more practices, okay? You have all the practices, you have all the resources at your fingertips, is whether or not you want to like use it or not, okay? Bye-bye, everyone. Go, go. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Let me feel happy while I'm marking your papers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Who is that laughing? I heard you. Okay, bye-bye. 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 I'm still available tonight if you've got a question, ask me, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Work hard. Bye. Don't disappoint yourself. Bye-bye. Bye, Jia -bye. Bye, Bye, Ryan. Bye, Trisha. Are you there or are you just like hanging out? I'm still here. Okay, good okay, job, bye. Ryan. Bye. Do work, huh? do work. Huh? Bye, Jia -en. Ask your brother to do work also. Jia -en, are you there?